Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at how to build an Angular app with the Angular CLI and NPM. And more importantly, we're going to look at how we can use the Angular CLI to prepare our code for deployment. So let's get to it. So what I have in front of me right now is the GitHub repository I'll be using to deploy the Angular app. So this is just a simple Angular 6 application. And basically what I have at the moment is I have a branch called master, but the branch I'll be using to do phase one will be the phase one branch. So if you're looking to follow along with the videos, I suggest you check out this branch here. I believe that I've got this publicly available, so you should be able to do that. If not, let me know but I will put this information into the comments. So I've just pulled down the code and I haven't done anything else at the moment. So when you usually uh, wanna build an Angular application for the first time, the first thing you'll go about doing is installing all the packages using NPM. So if you've got NPM installed, hopefully you just go NPM I. Now this has to be in the directory of where your Angular application is sitting for this to execute properly because it needs to be it needs to be able to look up the package.json. Um, if you're familiar with Node, you would know this already. So I'm going to run this quickly and let it get all the dependencies. And now everything is installed. So the next thing I can do is quickly run this application so we can see what we're actually going to deploy. So I'm just going to use an ng serve here and let it do its thing. Okay, and now we've got it fully running. Let's go and check it out in the browser. And what we have here now is a very simple Angular application. Now, it's built with three components. So what you're seeing in front of you for the most part is the main app component. However, inside of this little box down here, we have a feature component and it's controlled by routes. So these two buttons will trigger the route. As you can see, feature two is triggered down here when I click feature two, if I click feature one, it's triggered to feature one. Also up in the address bar, you'll see as I change them that the URL changes. Now this is actually kind of important because when we actually deploy this Angular app to an S3 bucket, there will be a problem that we will have to solve, okay? But for now, just understand, I've got an Angular app here with two routes, and that is all there is to it. So we've got the application running, but that wasn't really the point of the video, was it? We're really here to understand how we can build an Angular application and get it ready for deployment. Now, how do we do this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So the same Angular CLI we use to serve this content, we can also, also use to build and get ready for production. So I'm gonna stop the, the uh, serve here, and I'm just gonna clear the screen. So in the Angular CLI, there's a build command that we can use. So if I just use ng build, it's going to build the application without any compression, tree shaking, all those funky things that we like to do, you know, bundling, minification, all that kind of stuff. And I'll show that very quickly here. Cool, so now it's all built. Now, if I come over to this disk folder, which is now created, inside of here, we've got our application. Now there's a whole bunch of files in here. So we've got our main, we've got polyfills, we've got runtime, we've got styles. I'm not gonna go through what all these things are because really it's more of an angular focus to understand how all this stuff works. Just know that these are the files that are needed to run an Angular application that is not production ready so that you can debug it, right? So essentially this is used for debugging purposes. So you've got your main index and then you've got a whole bunch of JavaScript files generated, some of it by Webpack, some of it by Angular, but it's very hard to read obviously, right? And it's not really the intention of this video. But that's how you can do a standard build just using ng-build. However, there's a special flag we can use for ng build, and that is basically ng build dash dash prod. 
and this gets your Angular application ready for production. And we will see the difference in just a moment. So now I've done the actual build in production, and you can see there's a lot less files down here in the console. But also if I come over to the dist, you'll see now we only have a handful of files. So we have three JavaScript files, a CSS file, an index, and a fav icon, right? This third party license is just a bunch of text for licenses and things like that. So we're not gonna be looking at any of that stuff. But this is the output that we will put in our S3 bucket, okay? So just understand when you wanna build your Angular app using the Angular CLI for production, you just use ng-build dash dash prod. Now, I usually like to do this in conjunction with NPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a command that I can use in my build pipeline that will perform this action on my behalf. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to my package.json now, and I'm gonna scroll up to where the scripts area is. And we have a build command already, but I'm gonna add a new one here called build colon CI, so continuous integration, so to speak. And in there, I'm gonna put ng build dash dash prod and end that up. So this is the command I'm gonna use, or this build CI, sorry, is the command I'm gonna use that's gonna to translate to this. So let's just quickly try that. So to run an NPM custom script, I'm gonna come down here and go npm run, and then the name of the script, which is build colon ci. And you can see it's now starting to write ng build dash dash prod. And now as you can see, the same result. It creates that disk folder with the Angular DevOps project, and then the same files, okay? So that's basically the end of this video. In the next video, we're gonna start looking at some AWS features. More importantly, how we can get an account and basically understand users and, and permissions and things like that. Just some basics about IAM because we're going to need to understand some of that later when we get to creating the S3 bucket for hosting our website. So I'll see you in the next video.